I'm glad you know the truth now. I don't want there to be any secrets between us. It's far too important to me for that. And anyway, it's not a crime to have had an affair and then found out that you've made a mistake, is it? You know why I wanted to be certain there was nothing between you and Dickie? No. Because I wanted you to divorce your husband and marry me. And now? I want to more than ever. Darling. You will marry me as soon as you can get your divorce, won't you? <laughs> I don't know what to say. This is all rather sudden. Get me a drink, Jimmy. I don't want to touch his drinks. Well, I do. I need one. And so do you. think they own the road. I think you have let yourself fall into thinking too much of Mr. Dean. Sister, don't you realize what you're doing? What you're running the risk of losing in yourself? Sister, you must, I must make you see before it is too late. All the same, I've noticed you're very pleased to see him yourself. If that was in your mind, it's better said. I think you're out of your senses. Listen to me. I don't know. I can't decide now what to make of you. I shall have to think. And I want you to think too. As for Mr. Dean, in spite of his charm and kindliness, he is not a good man. You must take him for what he is and not try to glorify him into something he is not. When he came to chapel on Christmas night, he was drunk. Can I go? Right in front of the car. I know, I saw him. Brazos. Brazos. Thank you. 
what kind of a dame she was. She started to make a play for me while she was still chasing around with Dixon. Then when he dropped her and switched over to Linda, she and I started going together. I knew there was no future in it, but it was just one of those things when a guy knows it's all wrong but still can't let go of it. Oh, Mike, you scared the life out of me. Where are you going? I gotta talk to Johnny. What about? About Linda. Mother asked me to. Your mother asked you to, huh? Well, you're hurting me. Mother wants Johnny to stay away from Linda. She thinks he's no good for her. What about yourself? I don't get you. Where'd you get this? Like it? Where'd you get it? I bought it myself. You mean Johnny Dixon bought it for you? Why, he... Don't lie to me. I saw it on his dresser. I live with the guy, you cheap little chiseler. Flash, we interrupt this program to warn all listeners in the North Bay area. Be on lookout for a convict who escaped from San Quentin 15 minutes ago, probably on an outbound truck. His description follows. The escaped convict is 5 feet 10, hair dark brown, eyes brown. Last seen wearing gray prison trousers, black shoes. His name is Vincent Perry, sentenced for life for the murder of his wife three years ago. Well, what do you know? Please, please stop, I won't tell. Stop, stop. I promise not to cut an ear off, honest. Yeah? We'll have to talk that over some rainy night in front of a nice warm fire. I'll bring the matches. Goodbye. What's on your mind, Ronnie? Matches? No, I, I mean, look, Sam. It came today, license and everything. Now can I be your partner? I told you before, stick to watching the bird in, you'll die of old age. Oh, yeah, but I was cut out for this kind of life. All my life I wanted to be a hard-boiled detective like Humphrey Bogart or Dick Powell or even Alan Ladd. Look at all the angles. You know Whit, and you know how far he can reach. So just pay me off, and I'm quiet. But use cash. Don't try to pay me off with pitch handed to you with this cheap piece of baggage. I was hoping you'd do this. Police I'm going to the police car. Come on, what are these people doing here? Who are they? 
I'll wait for you, Johnny. I'm I'll thinking of the decent man he killed. Here we are. Come on, man. Wait, Johnny. I'll wait for you, Johnny. Hello. 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 I have something to take up with you. You have? It's pretty serious. You're five minutes late. <laughs> oh, that is serious. <laughs> What's the fine, Your Honor? One martini to be consumed at once. Oh, glad I wasn't a half hour late. <laughs>